Shabbat Shalom all friends to the weekly Torah inspiration. This week it is a parashat Noach this Shabbat and we learn about the tremendous vicious mubble, the flood that was rained upon the world in the time of Noah where the whole world was destroyed barring Noah, his three sons and also their wives respectively. So many different reasons are given to why this had occurred but the Torah actually says at this stage in time before the punishment had been imposed upon the world that there, it was a world full of Hamas. Now what is this uh, t Hebrew biblical terminology of Hamas referring to? It's uh, an amount that uh, is not a significant amount for its in own in individual punishment. So for example, let's say there was a man who had a big makolet, a big green grocery store, and he had a hundred apples there. Each person took takes an apple. Say a hundred kids come in and each one takes an apple. The guy is left with none. He's left with none left and that's all his parnasa, his wealth. It's all gone. However, to steal an apple there's not necessarily significant punishment that can be incorporated on one individual person and you can't collectively punish a hundred people for that. And that's what was going on in the world at the time of Noah. And that's one of the reasons why the Pasuk itself says uh, that the mubble had been rained upon uh, the whole of the entire wor world and had destroyed the whole world respectively. But we see in the Torah, there's, uh, it's discussed in length and there's three different forms of stealing. There's a form of stealing where it is considered gezel, it's robbery, it's in the daylight. And that is where a person is uh, not scared of Hashem and he is not scared of man. However, then when there's Geneva, this is done in the dark. When the person is done in, when the person does a transgression dark, for example, someone's gonna try and do a uh, midnight robbery, they are scared of man, but they're not scared of God over here. However, when it comes to Hamas, they're not scared of either over here. And this is those case when they're taking the apples, you know, they're not scared of God, they're not scared of man at that point in time, and uh, they feel it's so insignificant. However, the Torah is saying that these small things, these small apples, which the people are stealing, it's got such great significance to it. You know, even the smallest thing that we do, we should look at, we should analyze. Is this right? Is this wrong? The small tzedakah we give to someone, if a charitable cause, we shouldn't say, oh, giving uh, one shekel, giving uh, 10 pence is insignificant. No, this could have intrinsic value. It's not just all about the big things in life. It's friends. It's all about the small things we do. We should look at it, you know, when we, we try and grow spiritually or what it might be, it's if, even physically, let's just say, we've got to take the small increments, the small steps in building up. And that's where this patient process is going to build a person up. And the same is true. One should not say that uh, if someone does something small to someone else, oh, who cares? You know, big deal. I didn't do anything. No, it is significant, the Torah is saying. And that is one of the reasons why the Mabul came, the flood came upon the world because of these small transgressions which had been coming out of a man. Imagine it inside the shopkeeper. Everyone takes one grape from a cluster of 100 grapes. Say 10 people take it uh, and then 90 are left. You know, people won't want to buy that cluster anymore also. They're going to have to throw it away. It doesn't look as attractive as before. So the small things we do can have the detrimental effects. Guys, have awesome Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.